color. And William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, I mean, as always, it's for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do subscribe because well, there's so much to talk about. There's always so much to talk about, but perhaps this time you could subscribe quietly. Yeah? Um, it's uh, 5.20 ish on Monday, June the 13th, 2022, as I record this. And usually, okay, 58 keys. Um, it's about specific writing apps, isn't it? Or writing services, writing issues. Actually, quite often it's about the devices themselves, the iPhones, the Macs, and things. What always matters though is what we actually write. And if this gear, if these apps help us, well, it's not in isolation. It's, it's them working together for, for, it's actually about what we choose to use as we write. So this 58 keys is about that. It's about one day, and I don't know yet how many apps, plus I don't want to think about how many mugs of tea. I hope you'll find that some of the writing apps I mentioned are going to be of use to you, but I'm also going to find out how many apps I use, which is a slightly scary thought. Uh, but now, uh, I'm actually a little behind. As, no, I'm not. Hang on. Wait a minute. I'm already two apps behind. Is it one or two? I'm at least forgetting one app. I'm forgetting one for certain. The alarm app on my Apple Watch. It woke me up at five. Okay, now, all right, an alarm app or just a normal alarm clock by the bed. It's not like it should make a big difference, but it does. My watch's alarm app didn't make a sound. It tapped me on the wrist. So I woke up from it. I woke up from the alarm, but you know, the rest of the street carries on sleeping. Um, actually, and you just saw the time on my, on my watch. Go, uh, look again, please. That's my overnight watch face. That's, it's the face for a bleary man wondering how much longer can he sleep, please. And that watch face is on my watch from, I think it's 11 p.m., to 7 a.m. Pretty sure that we'll see it's around 7 a.m. though. At the, those times, the watch face changes by itself using another app, Shortcuts. It is two apps. Two apps and I haven't even woken up yet. Time to get on though to the first thing I need to write today. Actually, just while I've, while I've got you here in my living room, and what it's light, actually, I can't get used to this. Uh, apparently sunrise this morning was, according to Siri, third app was 4.45 a.m. Um, anyway, have a look at these, please. That's the last page of Alan Plater's scripts for Fortunes of War, and that's the time symbol from the film Arrival, written by Eric Heiser from the story by Ted Chang, the amazing Arrival, from the amazing short story. Um, anyway, I've had those on my wall for many years now, but otherwise this, this is quite new. Since about March 2022, I've been starting my weekdays here on my couch with my MacBook Pro. And I've been script writing, specifically script writing, nothing else. I write for an hour and uh, it's what now, 5.30ish. But it's definitely always an hour that I spend. It can just be any hour between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. or so, depending on when I can get up. It's the hour in the day that I climb into these scripts, into these stories. And if I do it now, uh, it's relaxing and it gets done. If I don't do it now, either, well, then either I have to try writing later in the day and then an hour is very hard to find, or, or I suppose I fail, although so far, something like 75 weekdays in, I haven't failed. You don't have to watch me for the whole hour or even the whole day. By the way, I should have said that uh, before. I, I just see this start, okay? Um, this is Bunch. It's a tiny utility that starts up uh, everything you need for a particular job. In this case, uh, my script writing hour. Uh, well, actually, no, uh, two things here. Bunch starts specifically what I need uh, for script writing, but it also starts other tools that I'm gonna need on my Mac throughout the day, um, whatever I'm writing, actually, whatever I'm doing, anything in my writing business. Uh, so for those tools, you may have seen them flash up quickly on the screen, there's Keyboard Maestro, 
uh, which is it's this essential, essential Mac app that I use for automating things. That is so not clear. Um, when I deliver something to an editor, for one instance, right, uh, and I make an invoice then, well, it's Keyboard Maestro that takes the invoice from pages where I write it, uh, makes a PDF, renames it to something useful, files that with the rest of the invoices, emails it to my client and separately to my bookkeeper with other notes, records the invoice in my database, and it also adds a reminder to my favorite to-do app, OmniFocus, telling me to check in 30 days time whether that invoice has been paid or not. And this app, Keyboard Maestro, it just, I mean, along, it does a dozen or more tiny other things along the way that I'm so used to, I, I can't even remember them to tell you about it. Uh, but that's Keyboard Maestro, and because um, yeah, I use it with so many things, it starts up first thing on the Mac. So does Text Expander. I should say there are 58 keys episodes about Text Expander and about Keyboard Maestro. Actually, also, there's another one. There's also a 58 Keys episode about Hazel. And that starts up first. That's running all the time on my Macs. And it's, uh, there are certain folders, for example, that's going to clear out for me in the next hour or two as I just work away and don't even pay any attention to. And in the meantime, then, for, you know, actual writing directly for writing, I'll be using Final Draft here. And I'm sure you saw this open up, Omni Outliner. I think through Omni Outliner. Yeah, it is about planning and outlining an idea, I suppose, but it's, it's the thinking really. It's getting stuff out of my head so that I can look at it and work on it. Yeah, but that's enough for now. Uh, it's gone 5.30. I need to do this. Um, I'll just set a timer on my iPhone and I'll see you in an hour. Uh, right then, it's uh, an hour. Um, save my Omni outline and document. Save the final draft script. Very important. That's the thing I've been writing. Uh, using the Finder, then I can choose. It actually, is the Finder an app? I suppose it is. Really. Um, anyway. Uh, all right. Here's another one then. Uh, in the Finder, find recents. Select the Omni outline and document and the final draft documents, and then drag them to mail. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm sending a backup copy of today's work to myself, which, which means mail, yeah, and which, as it happens, means also text expander, okay? Create a new email, drag the attachments in, let me just do that, and then uh, if I click in there and type XBU, this is what happens. Curiously, if I just drag uh, two documents from Recents over to the Mail icon in the dock, well, it does automatically open Mail and create a new Mail message, but for some reason, it creates two of them. One email message for each document that I want to attach, so I need to do it this way around. And send. That's quite satisfying, actually. Uh, actually it does feel good having that hour under my belt, even when, I actually, like today, it was quite a tough hour's writing, didn't get as much done as I hoped. Um, often, what happens is I get to about 40 minutes into the hour and I am spent. I can't think of another word to drag out of me. And yet, if I press on to the end of this hour I've set for myself, sometimes, only sometimes, but enough, what I end up writing in that last painful stretch turns out to be the best thing ever. It turns out to be really good. I mean, I think it turns out to be really good. Surprising, definitely, and I think good. I leave the hour anyway, uh, keen to come back to it tomorrow. Now, uh, need to move on. I should say, I've chosen today to choose you, partly because I only just thought of it, but also because as well as writing here and uh, writing in my office upstairs, I have to go out to a meeting later. N normally, my weekdays are either entirely in my office or entirely out, but today it's a mix, so I can show you some different things. And later this week, I'm all day out in London. So I'm going to go make a cup of tea. And while the kettle's boiling, I'm going to use the train line app on my iPhone to book the tickets. 
But then actually also, there are three things that I read every day, only two of which involve apps. You, you might already be glad to know. Uh, the one that doesn't actually, the one that I'll read in a minute while I'm drinking tea is this. I relish Jane Austen's writing and I'm reading one of her letters every day in an actual book. But then, well, I don't always do this, um, you know, one thing after another, but I think I've got time today. I also read a script on my iPad, iPad or Mac. I read a script every day and I have done for five years or so. I mean, I've read scripts all my life, but one a day for five years at the moment. I'm working through Doctor Who TV scripts from the 1960s, as you do. So that's reading a PDF um, on my Mac using preview or in books on the iPad. And last actually for this reading relaxation thing, uh, also, I read a Kindle book for at least 15 minutes. It's going to be 15 minutes today. It's that kind of day, but at least 15 every day. And today, just for absolute completeness, I'm reading George Eliot's Middlemarch and John Irving's A Widow for One Year as well. Tea needed. Back in a second. Yeah, I'm surprised to say, actually, I'm only on two teas and it's now 9am. I did also get toast with the last cup of tea and a ban banana if I'm being really thorough here. Uh, but now this is my office. I don't know why I write that first hour in my living room. I mean, I think it it separates one type of writing from one type of job, I suppose, from another. Today, actually, I carried on after you saw there. I was working through the email inbox because a thing came up with the Writers Guild, responded to that, and I kind of had to deal with others. So I did that and I stayed there. I also did the reading and doing just various other bits and pieces I have to do, including a spot of breakfast. Um, and in a second, I must write a short news story and then go get changed. Um, actually, anyway, let me explain. This is usually where I spend m most of my day, where I do most of my writing. And this is my office Mac, which is uh, it's already running Hazel and Keyboard Maestro and Text Expander. But it's here and about this time that I tend to also begin using OmniFocus. Uh, uh, this is my to-do app of choice, my beloved to-do app of choice, and also the calendar app, Fantastical. Um, with those two together, I go through what I've got to do today, what I've got on today, but also what I've got on tomorrow, because I don't ever want to get to this desk and realize that I should have left for a writing workshop or something that hasn't happened, that hasn't happened, that has not happened. You figure out the day and then finally, in theory, finally, I turn to mail. Uh, I used mail earlier, but just to send and I try not to read anything. I mean, I failed today, but usually I try. Um, I will also use OmniFocus constantly throughout the day on the Mac, on the iPhone. I practically live in that app throughout the day in the evening. And since today it has a, a bit of a tighter schedule than usual, I mean, only a bit, while I'm at my Mac, I also press this. That's a, a button that launches on Stream Deck that launches a little app called HB Clock. No idea why it's called that. Actually, well, I mean, I can work out the clock a bit. Uh, but this is what it gives me, an on-screen thing. I just kind of find that easier to keep an eye on instead of schlepping all the way over to the menu bar all the time, in particular because it's a wide monitor. Now, I'll just write this quick thing quickly, then change, then you and I will head for the car, okay? Right, uh, what time get? Uh, a little bit early. Actually, I didn't think this through. Next time, next time you come with me to a meeting, we'll go even earlier and we'll, we'll, we'll have a coffee and you can talk me through all the things you are not writing. And then we'll run out of time before we can get to the bits I'm not writing. Uh, listen, I think you may have picked up already, uh, I'm driving, because uh, I've got to get to this meeting. Actually, just the way the day is going, I could, I could have gone by bus the way I might, normally would. Birmingham in England where I live has a very good bus network and there's an excellent app that I use a lot called City Mapper. It's very good for planning routes uh, across buses and trains and Ubers and walking. It's a superb app. Trouble is, here in Birmingham, 
the data's a bit rubbish. I don't know why. It must all come from the central point. But you can look at City Mapper, you can look at the official app, and uh, they'll tell you different things, and they're both wrong. But for planning routes, it's excellent. So if City Mapper is available in your city or near a city, a yellow car, then it's excellent, but check it out first. This time, uh, it's not so much, I mean, you already know we're early, so it's not so much that I have to hurry to get to this meeting, but I have to hurry to get back, so I'm driving. But that doesn't mean I'm not using apps, I'm using this, using CarPlay. I'm not sure to call this one app, or three, really, because you see the main view there, that's a map of the screen, that's a map of my route. Uh, I know where I'm going, I've been to this company a lot, I like them a lot, I go there reasonably often but I always use maps anyway um, because it shows me my ETA and I find it oddly relaxing that I'm going to be this early it also shows me traffic conditions up ahead it's generally very calming um, I have actually switched off all of Siri's driving instructions though you do that by tapping here and there you can choose between tell me every turn tell me only big important things or just shut up forever and that's the shut up forever button uh, alongside that though if I'm driving to something like this and, and I'm not with you if I'm just on my own I will listen to music so through CarPlay there's Apple Music I can't actually play you any of the tunes that I'm listening to today but for thoroughness I will list them and then there's this last thing if I go to this view which is possibly my favorite view you get the map with directions, you get the current album art you're listening to, and you get this, you get the calendar. So that's uh, Apple Maps, Apple Music, and a calendar showing you things. And it's showing you the next event. You know what my next event is. Actually, I know what my next event is. So I'm not 100% sure how much use it has uh, being up there all the time, but maybe if you're driving all day and you've got lots of meetings, it'll tell you the next one and the next one. Okay, we don't actually have much further to go for this. Uh, but when we get there, though, there's going to be uh, two more apps um, I'll tell you about after the meeting. That was good. Actually, that was a good and useful meeting. I'm, I'm working on this quite a many year long project. And we had some various things to think about. Um, all the way through then, loads of things to discuss, loads of things to think about. I'm taking away all of that mostly an Omni Outliner. So I went in with a list of things and thoughts and Omni Outliner, added to it as we talked, and I'll carry on using Omni Outliner, working through it, planning, pondering. And then at some point, uh, some of that will come out and go into Omni Focus, my to-do app. But I did say, actually, before we pulled up, that there were two more apps to mention. Uh, one of them is probably unnecessary, but one's vital. It's a parking app. Uh, you hear in Birmingham, in the UK, there are many of these conflicting ones, but for this car park, it's one called Ringo. You don't have very fine control over how long you set on the parking. I knew it wasn't going to be more than an hour, uh, but getting to it and coming back to it, it could have been knocked over. So I made it two hours for it. They got their money out of it for that and fine. But then that, that's why I have the second app, which is the, uh, the timer. Uh, again, timer on my Apple Watch. Having set a parking session for two hours, just have it now. I set my watch to have an alarm for one hour and 45 minutes. So if I get really engrossed in something, that will remind me and I've hopefully got enough time to run back to the car or to extend the parking, which is, I think, the real benefit of something like Ring Go. As I was saying, though, the real reason for driving today instead of using uh, public transport is that I've got to get back to things. So. Let me get back to things. Oh, uh, I will still be using CarPlay, but since um, the meeting is over and I don't have to think any more about it for a bit, in fact, quite the opposite, I need to kind of get it out of my head for a while, I might not listen to music. I might, in fact, listen to a podcast instead. And of course, I'll list what podcast it is. If you're going to be detailed, you've got to be detailed, haven't you? I'll stop looking at me like that. Right, made it. Um, we can skip ahead quite a bit in the day now, and, and actually we have to, because from now to um, maybe 6 p.m., at least 6 o'clock, maybe a little later, 
which I'm booked to write today on appleinsider.com. And, and of course, I can't show you their internal systems or, or editors' briefings and things from there. But I can show you the sandwich. I got, yeah, okay, stop looking at me like that. Um, and I can also show you this. This is a bit more useful. Um, you saw Bunch earlier, how I used to set up writing. Well, this is using Bunch again. I get it to set up my Mac, in this case, for what I need with Apple Insider. And that means, well, it keeps certain things running that I had before, like uh, Mail, OmniFocus, uh, Fantastical. But it also adds um, Safari, Drafts 5, which is what I write in articles and most of the time actually writing in Drafts 5, Reader with double E in the middle, a Newsfeeder app uh, that I just live in, Pixelator Pro, an image editor I use 30 times a day, Google Chrome, which I have to use a couple of times. I really don't like Chrome and I don't know why, but there's just, there's only, there's one thing I do that requires Chrome for some unfathomable reason. So yeah. Bunch opens it for me and I, I try to ignore it. Um, Bunch also opens Slack for me. Um, if you don't happen to know it, Slack, it's uh, is it WhatsApp for business. It's, like, it's a communications app. It's so useful that you put up with its problems and there's a problem. That error message there in Bunch is not Bunch's fault. It's not Apple Script's fault. It's nothing except Slack's fault. It's just Slack not playing nice. And it doesn't matter. Notice, by the way, though, that Bunch has also opened up certain folders that I need for this work. I do actually now need to rearrange some of this stuff so that it's where I need it and want it. Bunch won't always do that. Um, I want to be able to click on a, actually no, if I do this, here's draft five. If I click on this window and then press this keystroke, that will fly off to where I want drafts to be. And that's keyboard maestro again, by the way. If, for example, I really don't want Chrome in my face for when I don't need it. Uh, so I can fling it around like that, but I can also move it to a second space like that. And then you can skip between, it's like having two desktops or three or more. That's spaces on the Mac. Does that count as an app? Is that another one that is or is an app? Let's call it an app. Um, now I do have a video meeting later, so I will be launching Zoom. And because, well, sometimes, not actually today, but sometimes when I have a video chat, I need to show as well as, you know, my face, I need to show documents on the screen and show it during a Zoom call. So in order to be able to do that multi-camera stuff, I use OBS, the Open Broadcast something. It'll be in the list below. It effectively lets me vision mix uh, a screen with camera. Okay. Um, as I say, I'm not using that today, but I do it often enough that I leave Zoom set up uh, using OBS. And so when I use Zoom, I have to run OBS. Uh, yeah, getting into a lot of detail and there's a sandwich waiting and it turns out I'm on deadline. Back in a sec. Well, a couple of hours. Well, a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, I forgot. Um, doing up and such stuff, but uh, let me take a second to show you this, sort of show you this a bit. Um, every weekday, as it happens, I also check my bank accounts. It's not because there's so much money pouring in, but rather I'm a writer. I'm a freelancer. I, yeah, I've had difficulty over the years with money and checking each detail each day means, uh, it means I catch problems sooner if there are any and I haven't been for a while, hopefully there won't be. But it also, it kind of keeps me thinking about money, aware about money when really I just rather run away please run away and spend it on Apple. Yeah. Um, and the reason to show you this is that uh, it involves four apps, including two that I haven't mentioned yet, or I would might've skipped this bit. Um, all of these figures, by the way, I should say are fake, but otherwise this is the numbers spreadsheet app with my account figures. I do really like Microsoft Excel, I should say. I really dislike Word, really like Excel, but I, I just, I wouldn't use it enough to warrant subscribing to Office 365 to get Excel. And actually, as it happens, I really like numbers too, but okay, it's a spreadsheet. Um, I think you've seen this before, but watch this. Right, this is Hook. Uh, There's a 58 Keys episode uh, about this, links again below. When I have that particular spreadsheet open and I press this particular combination that I've chosen, particular combination of keys, hook displays this specific list of related items. I mean, as it happens in this case, there are three 
websites, but it could be two websites, five finder folders, uh, an app, some videos, uh, uh, and one document or 10 could be anything like that. But I have said that these three sites are linked. I need them whenever I'm running this particular spreadsheet. Whenever I'm doing what I need that spreadsheet for, I need these as well. And Hook lets me go straight to them. I open up the spreadsheet and go straight to each of these things, bank accounts in this case. So that's numbers and hook. Um, I did say four apps. Uh, let me just tell you the other two. Once I've got all these details for the day into numbers, there are this row of numbers, really. I select them all, copy, and then I go to mail. So that's, that's app number three in a series of four. Start a new blank email, and I type the letters XBAL for X balance. Keyboard Maestro takes that row of figures and passes them out, knowing that this bit is the number for that account, this one is for that credit card and so on. And it fills out the email that I send every day to my bookkeeper with headings like that, credit card colon amount, account name colon amount plus. Um, just all of the details really in the right places for me. It does kind of take quite a bit longer to say than to do though, and I've been saying it at some length really. So yeah, sorry, I need to get back, don't I? So, excuse me, one more time. Okay, uh, it's gone 6 p.m. Uh, actually, it's gone 6 p.m. Uh, look at my watch. I've been meaning to come back to this. I've been meaning to show this shows to you all day. As I said early on this morning, that watch face, it's automatically changed from my nighttime big digits look to this face. Uh, it's called Meridian and I just like it. And I just love that it changes automatically. 11 p.m. and then 7 a.m. It swaps. But now, one surprise for me is that I have so far only drunk four mugs of tea. Is there a shortage? I mean, was I asleep? I mean, what went on? A surprise for you might be in what I have not counted. Uh, for instance, I mentioned Pages, but I didn't count it in the list of apps I used today. Nor Scrivener, that didn't come up at all, and that's a superb writing app I use a lot, but not today. I just didn't need to use Scrivener or Pages today. Definitely will tomorrow, as it happens, both of them. Really. But then, uh, remember the thing that came up this morning with the Writers Guild? Well, it's carried on through the day, and uh, tonight I'm going to be doing some pretty quick edits on a series of their videos. Actually, I mean, you're a writer. Whether you're a member of the Writers Guild of Great Britain or not, do check out the WGGB YouTube channel. I, I'll include the link below. But anyway, uh, video editing for the Guild, right? That means I'll be using Final Cut Pro tonight on my Mac. I love Final Cut Pro. It's hardly... I love the Guild. Everything's good. Before I can do that, though, I need to cook. And while I cook, I'll be using Duolingo on my iPhone. I'm learning French. We, oui. But now, one day, four mugs of tea. What is going on? And 36 apps. 36 apps I've used to, as, as it turned out, actually quite a quiet writing day. I'm not, I, I want to think that it's amazing how useful so many apps are in uh, for a writer and, uh, and a writing business. It could mean I just need help. I can stop any time, you know, any, Anyway, I hope you spotted something in that long list that's useful to you. I wouldn't like, I really hope you have, because otherwise this is like, this is my dear diary moment. Although actually, as soon as I say that, I'm suddenly curious. I might do this again next year, just to see how things have changed, if they've changed at all. But for now, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself. Write more in as many or as few apps as you need, and I'll see you soon. 30 odd apps and only 4 T's. There's something wrong in the world.